your attention to the Gospels recorded by Matthew, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, I just want to read about three verses, very familiar verses. Matthew chapter 9, beginning with verse 35 through 38. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. May God's rich blessing be to his word and may it be sanctified in our hearts. Let us pray together, shall we? Father, we thank you again for this a privilege and an honor and for this grand opportunity to gather together one more time with these precious, precious people. And we thank you, Lord, for what we've already experienced in terms of the praise team and the choir ministering to you and to us and lifting us into your presence uh, through the gift of music. And we do not take that for granted. We thank you, Lord, for the offering that has been received, for the, those who gave and those who desired to give but were unable. We thank you, Lord, for the prayers that have already been altered for the worship that has already been lifted to you. And now, Father, we pray that you would open your word to us and that, way, that we might see hidden truths, golden nuggets from your law that will cause us to realize how rich we are because we have the word of God that has been preserved for us. And if the spirit of God opens to us, so speak once again to us, Lord God, from the simplicity yet, the profundity and the power and the unction and the anointing of your word. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to continue our thoughts this morning from this whole idea of rediscovering our evangelistic passion or zeal or fervor, or whatever word that you want uh, to use there. And now more than any other time in our history of this great republic, the church needs to be lifting the word of God and lifting the gospel of Jesus Christ as the hope, as the answer to our nation's perplexing questions and woes. And we find ourselves once again caught as a nation in the throes of grief after the tragic act that took place at Fort Hood in Texas just a couple of days ago. And we found ourselves reeling once again and our hearts aching over those family members who lost loved ones in that tragic incident, others who have been maimed and crippled and who will never be the same, who have to try to adjust to a, a new normal that they were not expecting. Some young people had returned back from Afghanistan or from Iraq. They did tours of duty in the military and returned home, basically physically unharmed or uninjured, now to find themselves maimed and maybe crippled or scarred physically and even emotionally for the rest of their lives. And so we as a church and churches all over this nation should be lifting up these families in prayer and lifting up our troops all over the world in prayer. This will have an effect on the morale of troops all over the world. And our chaplains need to be spiritually sharp as they're ministering to these men and women, many who are under tremendous stress. I've done, some have done multiple tours of duty in combat. And now to hear that at home, at the place where they're supposed to be safe and secure, that some of their fellow soldiers have been, have been stricken and have fallen at the hands of, of enemy fire. And so in the midst of all of the darkness and all the gloom and the despair, the church has to be lifting up a banner of hope and a banner of possibility that change can happen, that people can change. Lives can be transformed. Things can be different. 
we don't have to live the way we have been living. We can live a better life if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We as a church, we got to rediscover that message. And we got to believe it again. And we got to incorporate it into our lives again. And we got to live the victorious Christian life so that people can see that we really do have joy in the midst of all the struggle. The joy of knowing that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. The joy of knowing that one day we will see our Savior face to face. To know that our lives are not being lived in vain. That there is a purpose. That there is a meaning to our lives. And that God is indeed using us to tell his story about saving grace. His story about forgiveness. His story about hope being renewed and revived. So if ever there was a chance, time for the church to rediscover the gospel message, the time is now. The time is now for us to stand boldly and courageously and stridently and with great confidence and to say we really believe that we know the way. And we really believe that we have the answer to the most pressing need that presses upon the heart, the mind, and the soul and spirits of people. Where did I come from? Where am I going? How do I get there? And how does this life make some sense? during the track between the beginning to the end. That's the message of the gospel. That's the story that the Bible tells. It tells us where we came from. We are created in the image of God. We have intrinsic value and worth. Our lives really do matter. They really do count to God. And because we're created in the image of God, we have value and we have worth and we have purpose. That we're not just a cosmic accident that just happened to be here. That we have a divine origin and God has a purpose for us. And through faith in Christ, we can discover that purpose and that meaning. And we can be on the route that God would have us to travel to get us safely to the other side. That's the meaning of the gospel. And that's why heaven divested itself of the best that heaven had to offer and sent Jesus Christ, God in human flesh, to walk on this earth to show the way. And then to be offered as the perfect sacrifice, the one who could atone for the sins of the whole world, to be raised from the dead, to declare for all of time and eternity that God has satisfied our sin debt. That's what the gospel is about. Our sin debt has been satisfied. And there are people that are still living with guilt and with shame and not knowing how they can rid themselves of the guilt and of the shame and of the embarrassment of missteps and mistakes. That's what the gospel is all about. Someone said that's why they put erasers on the back of ink pens or pencils. That's why they put the uh, backspace on the computer so that we can correct our mistakes. And God has sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to let us know that there's no mistake that we could make, no sin that we could commit that is not correctable. Christ has already paid the price for it. If we would just repent and turn to God, receive his forgiveness, and then walk in that forgiveness that we can experience at God's forgiveness and God's grace upon our lives. That's what young people need to hear today. I, I don't know how to communicate it, but I'm trying to get, let young people to teach me how do we communicate it. Young people, many of them are sort of, they're disconnected from a caring community. They're disconnected from nurture and a sense of being belonging to something that's significant and that's meaningful. And so some of them feel so disconnected. They try trying to find somewhere to connect. And they often connect in the wrong environment, in the wrong situation. And it puts them on the wrong road, heading in the wrong direction, going to the wrong destination. And so one of the struggles that we have as a church, one of our challenges, how do we how does the church become relevant to the struggles of the day's young people? How do we package the gospel message in such a way, communicate it to them where they can see that God understands their situation? That God is never out of date. He's never out of step. He's never out of touch. That God is always contemporary. He always understands the problems that people are going through. And because he always understands, his message is always relevant. And he always can bring healing to their broken heart. Peace to their troubled minds. Hope to their spirits where there might be despair. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. To bring hope out of hopelessness. To bring possibility out of despair. And that's what I see in this text right here this morning. Uh, if we had the time, we would serve you, survey this entire chapter of Matthew all the way back to chapter 8, actually. 